How's it going guys, JP back at you once again bringing you guys another episode in my entire DVD and Blu-ray collection. This is episode number 16, a series in which I walk you guys through my entire collection, show you guys everything that I have and talk about each title a little bit. So let's jump into this episode. First up we have Junk Food Horror Fest. I believe this is some sort of anthology from uh, Chemical Burn. I have not seen this one. I've had it in the collection for quite a while and just have not ever got around to watching it. I will one day, but it's definitely not on my short list. After that we have Killer Bees. I recently reviewed this on a episode of Body Bags over on the Body Bags YouTube channel. I actually like this one a little bit. I love killer insect films. A lot of them are very bad. This one was kind of fun. There was a lot of bad CGI in it. But overall, I had, a, I had a good time watching it. It's not the best film in the world, but if you liked insect horror films, this one might be worth checking out. After that, we have The Killing Room. I did see this a while back, and it was god-awful. I don't even really remember anything about it. I think I rated it around a 3 or a 2.5. It's kind of one of those contained horror films that just... It, it's just a bad movie. I can't really remember anything about it either. After that we have Tim Ritter's Killing Spree. I like this film a lot. This is from the retro 80s horror collection from Camp Motion Pictures. It's a shot on video. It's one of the better shot on videos that I've seen. I am a fan of shot on video. I love the feel and the style of those you know, old 80s, 90s shot on video films. They are pretty bad, but I think if you like them, you like them. If you don't, you won't. You, you're not going to like any of them probably if you don't like some of the better ones. So. Tim Ritter's Killing Spree is one that I found pretty entertaining. I loved the psycho atmosphere of it and stuff like that. It was pretty cool. After that, we have Killjoy Goes to Hell, the fourth film in the Killjoy series, and it's also the best film in the Killjoy series. Killjoy 1 is completely awful. Killjoy 2 is a little bit better than the first one, but still completely awful. Killjoy 3 is okay, and Killjoy 4 is actually good, so it's kind of weird. It goes straight up, which is normally not the case when you're dealing with sequels, but Killjoy 4 is actually pretty solid. It's Killjoy Goes to Hell, Killjoy in Hell, a lot of clowns and crazy stuff. It's it's good full moon stuff. If you like uh, some full moon films, you'll probably like the fourth Killjoy film. It's, like I said, the best in the series, and it's one of the better recent full moon films that I've seen. After that, we have Stuart Gordon's King of the Ants. I believe this is Stuart Gordon. Could be wrong, though. Uh, this is a film that I've still not seen. I picked it up because I thought it was a killer insect movie, but apparently it's not. So I will give it a shot because I do like Stuart Gordon from Beyond, uh, you know, Dolls, a lot of good stuff from Stuart Gordon that I've seen. And uh, I still need to see Reanimator, actually, but, you know, even the Master of Horror episode, Dreams in the Witch House, was really good, so I hear that this one isn't the best Stuart Gordon film, but I like Stuart Gordon, so I'm definitely going to give it a shot. After that, we have King Kong and Son of Kong. Uh, I picked these up because it was uh, $5. I know there's better editions of King Kong out there, but I just wanted to grab this one because... It was cheap at Walmart, and I'm addicted to buying things at Walmart that are cheap, even though I probably either don't want them or don't need them, or there's better editions out there, but I just like, when I go in there after work or something, I, I usually want to walk out with something so I don't feel like I wasted my time. Uh, I have seen the original King Kong years ago, so I'm definitely excited to revisit it. Uh, Son of Kong, I've actually never seen, but you know I'll probably do some sort of double feature when I eventually get to these. After that, we have Kingdom of the Spiders. This is not the Shout Factory version. It's the other version that was put out. This is a lot of fun. This is, you know, 70s awesome killer animal when nature attacks type movie. I uh, would say insects, but spiders are not insects, but they are still just as creepy and crawly as insects are. So I do kind of lump it in there uh, with my killer insect films. Uh, I love these type of films, man. The 70s was great for these when nature attack films, and Kingdom of the Spiders is one of the better ones. William Shatner, a bunch of spiders invaded town. They use practical spiders. Looks really cool. I highly recommend Kingdom of the Spiders if you've never seen it. After that, we have Kingdom Hospital. Uh, I'm not sure how the... I, I don't know if this was a TV show or a miniseries or what, 
but I know that this isn't the first uh, part, so I definitely need to grab the other parts before I actually watch these. Stephen King adaptations are something that I truly love. I mean, there's so many good ones out there. There's so many bad ones out there, too, but, you know, normally they're bad because they were mishandled, because usually the core work is brilliant. You know, Stephen King is a true master of horror and will go down in history as one of the biggest um, components of the horror genre, one of the biggest mainstays in the horror genre, one of the biggest contributors in the horror genre. So anything with his name on it, I'll see whether it's good or bad uh, just because of curiosity's sake. So Kingdom Hospital I will eventually check out. After that we have Laid to Rest. Um, this one is a favorite of mine. I, I really, really enjoy this. This is a great modern slasher. There's a ton of plot holes in it and things that don't make sense, stuff that was unexplained. But I still really like it. It's a road horror. It's partly a contained horror in the end of the film. Uh, Cool-ass killer, likable characters. Just an all-out great modern horror film. I love Laid to Rest. I watch it every now and then because uh, it's one that really does you know stick with me I like checking it out every few years it's it's cool stuff laid to rest if you've never seen it I highly recommend it it's a lot of fun a lot of fun just expect some plot holes but it does have some creepy atmosphere as well after that we have Lake Placid uh, <laughs> I love Lake Placid it's it's a cool killer crocodile movie or killer alligator I'm not really sure I haven't watched it in a while it's been a few years since I've seen it but I used to check it out all the time when it would air on TV I remember renting it hell I remember when it was on uh, pay-per-view renting it so it was one that it, when it came out I I just loved I thought it was so cool I you know I've always been a fan of uh, the alligator films from when I was a kid so you know to see something like Lake Placid years later I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, I do have the Blu-ray of this as well which we'll get to later in the series. Uh, Lake Placid I don't really have many negative things to say about it. It's a lot of fun. I love killer uh, animal movies. I think there is some bad CGI in it but like I said it's been a while. After that we have the Langoliers. This is another Stephen King adaptation, one that I actually really love. It has this great creepy atmosphere to it where you're not really sure what's going on and the world and space and time is just a little bit off. And I love that about it. It has this great atmosphere to it. Unfortunately, it has a lot of uh, terrible CGI in the middle center of the film, like some of the worst CGI that's ever been uh, put onto screen. It's, it's really bad. But besides that, I mean, it's a great movie. It's very long. You're not going to be able to watch it all the time. But uh, it's one that every every now, every you know, five, six, seven years, I'll, I'll definitely pop in uh, the Langoliers because of that atmosphere. It's it's great for the Halloween season as well. Uh, highly recommend the Langoliers. It's a lot of fun. After that, we have the Last Exorcism. Uh, I thought this one was okay. I remember renting this and Paranormal Activity out of the Red Box years ago and I liked them both. I think it was Paranormal Activity 2 actually but I, I liked them both. They're not the greatest films in the world. Uh, I, I kind of just like the interesting spin on the exorcism genre. Had a interesting twist ending. It's definitely not the best film but I, I did enjoy it. After that we have The Last, last Exorcism Part 2. The title is retarded. Um, just the fact that they called it The Last Exorcism Part two is just silly to me. I know technically it does work. It's still the, it's still continuing the last exorcism, um, but it's just a little silly. It comes off silly. Um, I actually have no interest in checking this one out anytime soon, uh, but I do have it in my collection. Got it really cheap, so I'm not going to complain about it too much. After that, we have a bootleg copy of Last House on Dead End Street. I'm not exactly sure um, what this film is. I didn't buy this. I got it in a contest. I, I got a handful of bootlegs, like the Elsa film, in the con in a contest. Uh, now this cover is not as good as like the Elsa cover, but uh, you know it's it's a pretty poor bootleg. But still, you know whatever. I, I'll keep. I don't know if this film's available on DVD. If it is, I'll pick it up. Uh, I still haven't watched this or anything. It, it looks like a last house on the left ripoff. I mean, it even has the famous tagline, keep repeating, it's only a movie, 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 it's only a movie. 
um, which I believe actually came from a Herschel Gordon Lewis film uh, originally. So, Last House on Dead End Street. After that, we have Last House on the Left, which is a Wesley Craven classic. Uh, I've only recently started liking this film a little bit. Uh, everybody talks about it, but I've always said that the comedic shifts in this film just ruin it for me. I don't like it at all. I don't know. I understand. I, I have heard why Wesley Craven did that. You know, he said that there could be something extremely violent on one station, and you can turn it, and it could be like the Three Stooges or something. I understand. It just doesn't work for me. Um, but, you know, geez, Krug and, you know, David Hess's character is just, you know, sick. And uh, there's certain scenes in this film that are truly effective, uh, and certain scenes that are extremely not effective. So, Last House on the Left is awesome, but I've only recently been able to really enjoy it. After that, we have The Last House on the Left. This is actually a UK edition. Now, I'm not sure if this has the exact same special features or not. I won this in a contest as well, so I've just, you know, stuck it in my collection. Uh, I haven't opened this version or checked it out or saw if it was any different at all, but I have it. After that, we have Last Lives. I have no idea what this is. Uh, <laughs> it looks terrible. I probably will not pop this in the DVD player anytime soon unless somebody drops me a comment and tells me like, hey, you have to check it out right now, it's super awesome, which I highly doubt, but it's happened before, so who knows. After that, we have Late Fee, which is pretty not very good. Uh, it's like an anthology, it had a great concept, like a videotape. I think one of the segments were good, but overall it just was very average or below average. I don't really remember much about it, but it has a cool cover, cool slipcase, stuff like that. Uh, maybe I'll give it another watch one day. I'm not really sure. I think it's set on Halloween, which is pretty cool. After that, finally for this part, we have The Legend of Boggy Creek. I don't know. I, I really didn't care for this film too much. I thought it was average, like a 5 out of 10. I love the concept. I love certain things about it. It has this really creepy cinematography to it. Uh, like documentary style, but it just I couldn't get into it as much as I thought I would. So Legend of Boggy Creek, not my favorite, but uh, it does have its fans. Maybe I'll give it another shot eventually. So that's it for this part, guys. Thanks for watching. See you guys in another part. Peace out.